Hey everyone, today I want to show you how you can get the .NET Podcast application up and running for local development on your own machine. The .NET Podcast application was the highlight of the .NET Conf 2021 keynote. It was an awesome podcast app built across desktop, mobile, and web using .NET MAUI, Blazor, and really powerful ASP.NET Core backend integrations and Azure services such as Azure Container Apps. Now, what's really cool about this is that you can totally get it all spun up and deployed into your own Azure instance, or you can run it locally, which means you can start playing around with this application on your local machine on any of those platforms that you would like. So let's go ahead and check it out. Here we are inside of github.com slash Microsoft slash .NET dash podcast. I'll put a link in the show notes, of course. And this is the GitHub repo for all things in the .NET podcast app. One thing to note here is that there's actually a live running version of the app right here. Now, while there are buttons for the App Store, they're not quite in the App Store yet, but this is the ASP.NET Core um, um, application with Razor Pages. And if you click on sign in, there's really nothing to sign into except for navigating to the Blazor application. So this is the Blazor application. You can tap around, check out different podcasts like my podcast, Merge Conflict, and go ahead and listen to it and do listen together mode. It's fully functional. Now, if you scroll down, you'll see some things like architecture diagrams, which are really, really cool. That was built with the Azure icon pack and also Figma. Down over here, we have a list of all the repositories that you'll see. So, or I should say solutions in the repository, like the .NET MAUI app, the website, backend API, and even a Blazor hybrid application that was shown later on in the Blazor hybrid session at .NET Comp from Elon. Now, there's two ways of deploying this, uh, of course. Uh, one is a full deployment using GitHub Actions. There's a great setup guide here from Nish Neal from my team uh, who wrote um, how to do this locally. So if you're interested in that, you want to put it up in your own Azure instance and deploy this thing yourself, you can totally do that. Or you can do local development. And this is what I'm going to show off today. I wrote this guide. And how the application is structured is that you can totally go ahead and try to run all the things locally or deploy bits and pieces of it. But there are some dependencies such as um, Azure storage, uh, kind of you know, local storage for containers, but then um, um, and blobs and things like that. But then there's also a database too. So actually using Docker is going to be the easiest way to get up and running. So the first thing you'll need is Docker desktop. So here it is. And then we'll need to go ahead and sort of run this Docker compose up. And I'll talk about what that's doing as we kind of see it get deployed. But we need to go ahead and clone this repo. So let's go over and copy the HTTPS or SSH or GitHub CLI, however you want to do this. And what I'm going to do is just simply open up a brand new Visual Studio 2022 instance. And I got to do is hit clone repository and go ahead and paste that in. You can use any Git tool that you would prefer. Uh, however you want to go ahead and clone the repo, go ahead and do that. All right. Now that we have that up and running, what we're going to want to do is come in over into a terminal. So here I'm going to use PowerShell, but you can use um, command prompt, anything like that. And now that we have Docker um, desktop installed and we have the code, we're going to go ahead and navigate to it. I'm going to say GitHub here and then cd.net uh, podcasts. YouTube is the one that I have here. So this is going to be the one that we deploy to. Now, all I need to do is docker compose up. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to go ahead and download any Docker containers or images that you need, and it's going to start to deploy things. Now, I've gone already ahead and started. Uh, I've already did this ahead of time. So I already have all of the images here. So we can see all the different images of the APIs that are right in here in the Docker desktop app. If I go into containers, what happened right there is it deployed all of those containers into this sort of hierarchy here. Now, I, of course, had these images downloaded and compiled ahead of time. So that may take around three or four or five minutes based on your internet speed and your machine as well. But let's go ahead and actually see what's in this thing. So the first thing that we want to note here is that I have .NET Podcast YouTube. So that's sort of like where it's being deployed from. Down over here, we have storage, which is running on port 10,000. We have a full database. We have the API deployed. We have an ingestion worker, which is for submitting new podcasts to the application, an updater that's running in the background, the listen together hub, and actually a website too, which is kind of cool. So if I actually click on this open in browser, um, what we'll go ahead and see is that the application is now running right over here on a local host 
5,000 too, which is quite cool. If I come in and I hit sign in, you can see that the application is running right here. So it's the application running locally. Everything's here and working as expected. I can click on my podcast and there it is. Everything's running all on local host. So what happened when I ran Docker Compose up? Well, the PowerShell over here is kind of doing stuff. And we actually scroll to the top if it'll let me. Basically, it went ahead and it deployed the application all locally. And it's running this ingestion worker that's just sit, simply sitting there and updating the podcast feeds over and over again. Now, you can just go ahead and stop that if you want and control C, do everything you want there. And that'll shut down all the different podcast services. So if we go back over to Docker Desktop, we can see nothing is running over here and the application is not running. Now it's cool that I ran everything locally, but what do I actually need to do to run some of these things local? So let's go ahead into the podcast um, solution over here. So I'll open up that folder and we'll note that we have four different solutions. We have services, .maui Blazor, which is the hybrid app, web, which is the ASP.NET Core front end, and also the Blazor application, and then also .NET MAUI, all right? So a few things that we'll want to do. Let's first start with services. This is gonna be our backend service, our listen together mode, um, and our different worker services that we can see over here. So let me zoom in one more time so we can take a look at those. And we can see API, we have our um, shared code infrastructure, then an ingestion worker, an updater worker, and also a listen together hub too. So one thing that you could do is come in and let's say we want to debug um, this. I'll set that as my startup project and we wanna run it locally. Well, there's gonna be a few things that this needs to communicate with. And specifically what we're gonna be looking for are a few things here, podcast DB and a feed queue. So these are the local databases running locally in our app settings and that's how they're configured. So that is how it's going to go ahead and store and retrieve that information. So over in Docker, I'm going to go ahead and spin up a few things over here. I'm going to go ahead and spin up my storage that's going to be required to communicate with and also my database. Now, I actually don't need to spin up anything else over here because the feed queue is part of storage. That's where that lives. And then the database here is the database. And we can see the port actually maps correctly over here to 5433, 5433. We just have a generic username and password over here. All right. So we have that set up, those two services. That's all I'm going to need, storage and podcast database. Now with that, I'm going to go ahead and hit debug on my podcast API, and that will compile up the application here. Let me go ahead and open up my program CS. And we can see that we have a new minimal API, and we have services like Swagger and Cores, and we have, uh, there's our Swagger UI on it and a few different um, map gets and also a map post over here. So let me go ahead and open up the Swagger UI. Here we go. And we can see right away that we have our API. So if I go ahead and hit try it out on my categories, hit execute, sure enough, I get my different things back. If I come over into my shows and I go ahead and hit try it out, I hit a limit of, let's say, one. Let me get the top show back over here. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. We can see I get one show back, which this is going to be um, the dot .future. I can come in, look at this ID, come over into the specific show, hit try it out, paste in the ID, and now I'm going to get back um, some information about this here. So that should go ahead and give that there. doesn't look like it wants to. Oh, let me double check here on the show. Execute ID. Oh, here's the ID. I copied it wrong. Got that in there. So let's go back down here, paste it in. There we go. And now we've gone ahead and we're getting all the different episodes back from that specific podcast. And that's hitting this API here. And now, of course, I am running this locally. So for example, if I hit a breakpoint here and I come back over into my Swagger UI, I scroll up here and hit execute. And I look at my, not episodes, but I look at my um, categories, for example. Let's try that one out. If I come back over here and go up to categories again, scroll up here and hit um, execute. We'll see that I hit the breakpoint and it's communicating with my local podcast database contacts and it's grabbing all the categories right from there. And of course, I have another 
uh, map get for my episodes. There's my feeds. And I also inside of here have a controller as well. So you can mix and match minimal API and the main controller here as well. So definitely give that a look. All right, so that's the backend API. So well, what if you want to run the Blazor application? I'm going to go ahead and open up the podcast client or podcast.web solution. And we have client, components, pages, and server and share. So there's a lot of different projects inside of here, but we care about the podcast server. This is an ASP.NET Core Razor project, but it also has the Blazor application in here. So this is actually the Blazor application here, and it's loading all these pages over here and all these things like that, which is really cool. So we have all that stuff up and running. Now, one thing to note here is that if I double click on the app settings JSON development, it's configured automatically for me to speak to local host 5000 and listen together mode 5001. Now I could come over to my services, run all these locally in my machine without debugging, get them all up and running. Or I can come in to my Docker over here and I can just simply run not only the podcast API, but I can also run the podcast listener. These are going to be configured, you guessed it, on port 5000 and 5001. So now all I need to do on podcast server is come up, hit debug, and this is going to start deploying my application. Now again, locally, not running from Docker, but running on my local machine right here. So let's give it a second to build and compile up, and it should open up a brand new um, browser, but of course talking to my local databases through the local web API that was set up for me automatically. So let's go over here and take a look. Here we go. Sure enough, here it is. This time it is clearly running on localhost 7255, which is cool. I can hit sign in and there we go. We have all of our podcast apps. I can zoom in a little bit. It goes ahead and goes ahead and uh, shows everything local here. I can click on a podcast. I can listen to an episode and have everything working as I would suspect, which is quite cool. There we go. It does look like maybe some of the images need to be fixed up, but this is running from real data. So we'll take a look at that. Maybe we got to fix that up and we'll push out an update. Now to get our .NET MAUI application up and running, we just need to open the .NET MAUI solution over here. So what we'll see is that the .NET MAUI solution in the mobile folder has not only the component library, the Razor component library that we're using for the listen together mode, but it also has, of course, the .NET MAUI project here. So this is going to give us our multi-platform solution for iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows that's over here. Um, and it's going to be based on our XAML here. So here's our XAML coming in here. And then we also have that Listen Together page, which is our Blazor web view. Now, one thing that you'll want to note is that inside of the .NET MAUI app, there's a config.cs file. And that's going to go ahead and control basically three different URLs for us. One is going to be the base URL, API, and the lesson together mode for all the different URLs that they're running on. Now, one thing that we want to note over here is that on Android specifically, it's going to run on this local loopback port, and then over here on localhost for Windows or other platforms. Now, in the drop down menu, you can select the framework that you want Android, iOS, Mac, or Windows. Of course, if you're doing iOS, you're going to need to run this setup over on your iOS machine over there or deploy it. You can also toggle Windows. I'm going to go ahead and run this over here on my Android emulator. And we'll go ahead and see if that's up and running. All right, our application is deployed. We have our splash screen over here. Now, again, all of my services are running right over here locally. So we see all of our podcasts come in right inside of here. We can go ahead and tap on the Don and Maui podcast, for example, and it's calling back all those APIs. And you can actually see down over inside of here that we have some logging going on, showing you the actual URLs that are being called right inside of there. So there you go. That is the .NET podcast application, not only the backend services, but also the Blazor application, ASP.NET Core application, and the .NET MAUI application that you can run on Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. Hope that you enjoyed this walkthrough from start to finish of the .NET podcast application. Um, I know I enjoyed every single bit of it. Uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave comments below. And until next time, thanks for watching.